we're live. And it's showing we're live. Good stuff. I'm just waiting for it to come up on the app. It should very soon. Jeez, the last one didn't come up on the app. You know that last one where I said we'd be on in five minutes? Yeah. It, di it didn't uh, come on. What a pain. Kevin Hildebrandt's watching. Excellent. Brett Dusain. Brett Dusain. Hey, Brett. Watching. How are you doing? Darn, I was going to go visit Brett. Kevin Hildebrandt said, hey, guys. I was going to visit Brett and I, and uh, today, and I never made it into the city. Darn it. Slick is watching. I have some magazines to drop off. To Brett him. said, hello, bro, and Chucky is watching. Hey, bro. Hey, Chucky. How's Chucky? Where is Chucky tonight? Where the is Chuck? That's what we want to know. Slick said, hey, Ponta. Hey, how are you doing there, uh, Slickster? Have a hard day? Uh, folks, poor Slick, he was in shit today. And I don't know whether I'm allowed to say how bad. Oh, oh I'm so bad. Brett said, doing well, my friend. Hope you are well. And Chucky said, Chuck is here. Chuck is here. Chuck is here. You're not here. Where are you, Chuck? Where the is Chuck? That's what we ask at times. Where the heck is Chuck? We're just uh, doing a couple of things here. Second, at uh, Peter Turner is on and hey uh, Peter. And Slick says good. And Scott Falls is watching. Hey Scott, how are you doing? Meow, Scott. <laughs> Chucky said, "I know." I, I'm saying meow to Scott because. Um, the uh, the other night, uh, Scott, uh, uh, we said uh, meow. So how's everybody doing tonight? Has, how, how many of you? Oh, go ahead. Brad Vandersteen is watching. Tony Modica said, hi, Dave. Hope you're well, Tampa. Tony. Uh, Scott Falls said, hi, Dave. Richard, or Slick said, I hope I get a uh, walking papers. Doug Correll is watching. Uh, Peter Turner said, hey, and Scott Folds said, good meow. Good meow, Scott. Uh, for uh, anybody who uh, watched the Super Troopers, they'd all know where that was from. So, folks, I'm talking to you from the seat of a truck with Canadian Trucking Magazine, which is something that's built for everyone. You don't have to be a truck driver to belong to this, because guess what? We're for the transport industry, the trucking industry. We have got a trucking base, but guess what? Everything you got, a trucker brought. So everybody is actually involved in trucking in some way, whether you're a consumer, whether you're a shipper, receiver, whether you're the admin people, or whether you're the people out there piloting the trucks. But when you think about it, everybody is touched by trucking because if everything you got a trucker brought, you got to all be touched by trucking. Red Shirt Friday today, I'm proudly wearing the uh, crest of Veterans Canada, Tri-Service Military Veterans of Canada. Hoorah! A good honorable group that Brad Vandersteen, who's on, belongs to and a bunch of us belong to and uh, which does great work for uh, veterans and and uh, cadet corps and veterans groups and everything else. Plus we volunteer and we help out when the help is needed. It is awesome, it's our pride, it's our joy, and it's uh, nice to wear this shirt. Uh, normally I wear a CTM shirt, uh, but uh, on my red shirt Friday, today I was wearing this shirt. So how many of you got calls from somebody saying they're the CRC? We are talking today again with a uh, a good friend of mine, a police officer, uh, who was saying, you know, they're getting flooded with calls. Uh, my daughter, the banker, uh, she got one of these calls and customers are getting calls. Um, a friend of mine with the Royal Canadian Mount Police even got one of these calls. Slick, who's on the um, on with us right now, got one of these calls. And they're calling everybody. I know we reported that they went out and they closed down that group, but guess what? That group is still operating and uh, because there's many of them from South Africa, Pakistan, uh, India, uh, you name it, Korea, 
all over uh, Europe. Uh, the uh, Scan uh, not the Scandinavians, the Scandinavians wouldn't, but the Slavic nations, they're all out there. They're all uh, uh, got their phone centers and they're making a killing, stealing people's credit card numbers. Cliffy Alberta is watching and says, that is a sweet shirt. Mark Matthews watching. And hey. So we got about four members of the Tri-Service Military Veterans on. Cliffy, thank you for your service. Mark Matthew, thank you for your service and all your continued services with uh, Cliffy and Mark and everything else and what they're doing. Um, Mark Matthew doesn't mind me saying, and I don't mind bringing it up all the time, is uh, he uh, proudly is one of the spearheaders of Veterans Advocates. Did I say that right? No. Uh, I'm screwing this up, am I not, Mark? But um, they're a group that helps veterans and the public with PTSD and, uh, and other uh, depression, things of that nature, peer groups, and they also have the medical resources and that to provide medical cannabis to help people out and get them their medical card and everything else. Now, warning, 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 warning. If you cross borders, if you're a border crossing into the US and you got one of those medical marijuana cards or you've consumed uh, marijuana, they will ban you from crossing the United States forever. So a warning to truck drivers and, uh, and anybody who is fighting cancer or any type of, of diseases or ailments such as depression, PTSD, that uh, may have to use cannabis, uh, um, uh, marijuana or stuff like that. Make sure that if, if a uh, customs officer asks you if you uh, are using marijuana or stuff like that, well, in fact, you're using medical cannabis and uh, you can tell them straight out, you don't use illegal drugs. That is a true statement that you are not using illegal drugs. I don't mind going publicly on the record here and saying it, you do not use illegal drugs. And that's the big thing that they're concerned with is whether a person is a criminal. And um, uh, in a lot of the United States, uh, smoking of cannabis and, and the use of the marijuana is illegal and therefore uh, admission to a crime makes you inadmissible to cross the border. So there's a good warning to remember so uh, if you're a long haul truck driver that's doing Canada US and you're suffering, that's off the table for you unfortunately, because you can be drug tested, you can be asked at the border, and that can be the end of your career. If you're a veteran or a person that's suffering from cancer, PTSD, depression, things of that nature, then you can get help. Hey Mark, could you put down what it's called? Um, I, I got a brain fart here and I can't think of the name of the group that even civilians can go to and get some counseling on this. Uh, so if you'd put that up there, I appreciate it. Maybe even a link to the Facebook page so people can go there and they know there's a place to go. I know I got a friend, Bryce Hooper up in Edmonton and he's got um, a group there and a place you can go. And I'm not too sure, but you can look up uh, Bryce Hooper on Facebook, private message him if you're in Edmonton, especially if you're uh, retired military, and he will help you out. It's a small community. A lot of people know people, especially real brothers. There's a word called brotherhood. Some people understand what a brother is. Cliffy understands brother. Brad understands brother. Mark there understands brother. Slick understands brother. I'm not sure what other brothers have come on here. So I could go on for years here uh, naming everybody who's coming on right now. But um, I just wanted to mention that since I'm wearing my red shirt Friday and since my good friend Mark came on, my brother and uh, a person who's still serving us, still looking after us, still looking out for us. Thank you. And Cliffy, if you're working tonight, be safe out there, my brother. Be safe because your life counts a lot to all of us. I'm glad you're born actually for all the great things you do and you continue to do with that Superman outfit hidden underneath your shirt there. So CRA, if you guys get calls or please tell your elderly relatives, a lot of you have aunts, uncles, parents, grandparents, whatever, that don't use the internet. They aren't really informed that there could be a phone call from somebody saying they're Constable Brown and uh, 
they're with the uh, CRA and they can be arrested if they don't pay their back taxes. It's only $120, it's only $80. It's a low amount, they tell them, and they'll take a credit card payment over the phone. Of course, the reason why they say it's $20 or, or $40 to get their credit card number is then they try hitting it for $2,000. And if that works, they'll try another thousand until they've maxed out the credit card. Because once they have the number, once they've got that expiry date, they can max that sucker out. So that's why I want to talk about that tonight. Uh, as a reminder, I know I've talked about it in the past, but again, just tonight, just tonight, my daughter got a phone call today and some of her customers did uh, asking her for money to pay off the, um, the uh, CRA. And it's, it's, it's BS. It's absolute BS. They don't phone you and ask you to pay. You know it. I know it. But guess what? The, um, these uh, people, even uh, uh, when I talk elderly, I'm 61 this year. Even people in their 60s, a lot of them aren't uh, uh, electronically equipped like we are. Uh, there's a word for it. I can't think what it is. But to give you an example... Uh, even Angie's father, who's younger than I am, ha, I inside joke tonight, hey, William. Uh, William's on the camera tonight. Uh, even he doesn't go on the internet and stuff like that, Facebook. So he hasn't been warned. If he got called up from the CRA, who knows? He might get caught with his pants down and say, well, it's only 25 bucks. I'll give him my credit card, get rid of this just in case. It's not 25 bucks, folks. That person on the other end of the phone is getting your your Visa or MasterCard number or whichever other thing and they can run it for whatever they want on the other end of the phone. And once the charge is there, uh, the bank's not going to do much about it because you gave them the number. You authorized it. So the other thing I want to talk about which is neat tonight and Amazon Alexa. Amazon Alexa. A lot of people have the Google, the Amazon Alexa do you realize that if you leave the mic on that it's learning it's sitting in there it's learning you think it's pretty neat that you can say alexa order pizza alexa email william and tell him i'm going to be late tonight but what you don't realize and this is a true fact and it's going to be hitting the news even though amazon's trying to depress it that that alexa as long as the mic is on it's sitting there and it's listening for all the uh, algorithms. It's listening there. It's listening to you talking and whoever's in your house talking all the time. And it's collecting that data and it's processing that data to some of the things that, uh, that it wants to uh, uh, then provide to you. So it's learning so it can automatically do it. So for example, you come home, you say, hey baby, let's get it on, let's have sex tonight. Next thing you know, Alexa saying, um, we're putting por porn Pornhub on your computer. You're going, Pornhub? Why do I got Pornhub on my computer? And it's because you've linked Alexa to your internet, to your computer, and it's learning and it's broadcasting all that information. But here's an interesting thing. Because it's listening to all the conversations, let's say I'm sitting there and I start talking about Cliffy. And I start turning to the wife and says, that Cliffy, what a jerk face he is and stuff like that. Uh, one of these days I'm going to tell Cliffy. Alexa hears, tells Cliffy and text messages him or emails Cliffy, you're a jerk. <laughs> and what has happened, what has really happened, this has actually happened to people. Alexa has recorded that conversation and sent the conversation as a voicemail uh, over the uh, email to the other people. This has happened to people. And they've called contact Amazon and says, our friend just got a, a uh, voicemail with, with us talking about them. And they said, yes, it's a glitch we need to work out because it's new. You got stuff in your house listening to you, learning what you're saying, and if you've used it for email or text messaging, or if it's got access to your iPhone or, or uh, to your uh, PDA or your computer, it has all those contacts. It learns it on its own. It's, a, it's like a little baby that's brain sucks in everything around it. That's what Alexa does. 
That's why I said warning, warning, warning. Unless you turn off the mic and then you can't use it to say, Alexa, turn on the TV. Alexa, turn on the lights. Alexa, cook us some coffee. Alexa, order pizza because you got the mic off. So you got the mic on and it's listening all the time. I swear. And Amazon knows this. Amazon says it's a glitch they have to work out because the fact Alexa is sharing this information with other Alexas as well. Let's say you're in an apartment building or condo and the people beside you or around you have an Alexa because you can put Alexa in different rooms and they can learn from each other. So you can tell one Alexa that you want the bedroom TV on, which tells the other Alexa, turn on the bedroom TV and that, because they have a broadcast system. There's been a glitch too. They've been broadcasting to each other. So, and it's not voice recognition because it can be used so anybody in the house can use it. Now, some people said you can put pins in with Alexa, that they, this is one of the thing they're doing is saying, in order for it to call out to order pizza, it will ask you a pin. And you go, yes, my pin's one, two, three, four. But a long, long time ago, when the earth was green, um, it came out with alarm systems. I'm involved in alarm systems, Seaforth Alarms. Actually, I own Seaforth Alarms, believe it or not. And um, the uh, Seaforth Alarms, uh, we were offered all kinds of free stuff because this two-way voice and that we could do it in our station with a two-way vo two, uh, voice. So if somebody broke into a house, we could hear what was going on in the house, that um, we could also customer, if they went in and they punched in their keypad, we could go on and say, who's this, do a voice uh, thing. And they said, oh, it's fantastic. And there were some companies that were selling it over the TV and everybody was selling it. So when I got one to demonstrate in my own house and we connected in the station, I found in the station, we could activate that system anytime. If one of my people were bored in the station, they could activate inside cameras and inside uh, speaker systems, uh, mics, anytime they wanted. Talk about invasion of privacy. So when people were coming to me, says, oh, we wanna get the inside cameras and speaker systems like so-and-so sells, I would tell them, are you kidding me? You're putting something in your house where if you get somebody in a station, an employee who's bored in the middle of the night or the evening, they can flick it on and look in your house. They can hear what's going on in your house. And you know what? You hope you got trusted people. You've got cameras in your station and everything else, but who knows? Who knows if that's gonna happen? Well, now with Alexa, this is what I'm telling people. It is proven. There's cases and cases coming forward of people that's who their private conversations have been sent to other people. It's a glitch. Well, it's because this electronic thing, Alexa, is listening to every word you're saying and it's learning. It's learning where you wanna shop, where you wanna eat, how you like to exercise. It's learning. It's got algorithms that is learning everything. It's technology. And then what it's doing is arbitrarily sending your conversations out to people they think you want to send the conversations to. Even if it's one in a thousand, do you really want to take that chance of saying something? I know you should never say something about somebody that you wouldn't say to your face, but unfortunately we know that's not the real world. We know in the real world, trust me, I know a lot of people out there, especially on Facebook's got their little pages so that they can talk behind people's back and they like to be trolls and they like to do, instead of being productive and that like we are with Canadian Trucking Magazine, trying to help each other with alerts and things like that, or Veterans Advocacy, Advocacy? Oh, geez, Mark, has Mark put down the name of it yet? Has nope. he put down the uh, link to it? Anyways, um, the uh, uh, there's others out there that as I say, things that they may want to say in private, they wouldn't want to say to uh, someone's face. Um, then, uh, of course, we're talking about events here. We got some events coming up. As you saw a live video last night with uh, my son, Rob, who you've seen at many events and SEMA and that over the years. Uh, he's joined by Amanda. And Amanda and Rob are going to make a good team. And they're off to Montreal to cover the Montreal uh, show next week. 
the Michelin show. And the neat thing about Robert, like he said yesterday, he's got direct access to the president of Michelin. So any questions you might have, make sure you do that. The I talked about signs. Let me slip on to the signs. This is really cool. There's a company in the UK called Caution Signs dot company dot uk caution signs dot co dot uk here can can we get that um i'm not sure if you can order these or not but i'm going to take this out of the package i just got it and i'll talk about these some more because i'm going to use these i think there's neat i got two different signs here that i think are cool okay the first sign I've got is this one here. Now, the reason why I think this is cool is I'm going to do it on this window, of course, but if I'm on my driver's side window, and let's say I'm taking my half hour break in that, and I don't want to be disturbed by a lot lizard or anything, I just stick it to the window, just like that. Another one, which I think is very important, and let's just do the uh, caution signs dot co dot uk. Were you able to get that okay? Yep. And um, with this is a, a really neat sign. You know how when you're taking your eight hour break, some people say, you know what, I'm not going to pull into the DOT, uh, you know, where there's parking. Because what do they come banging on my door when I've just gone to sleep? Look at this. In any language, that spells you're in the sleeper berth. At any language, that spells. So let's say I'm going into the sleeper berth and I'm parked at a scale because I'm running out of hours on my e-log. I can take this sign and I can stick it to the window like this. And it's stuck on. And uh, there we've got it. You know what I should try to do, William? Is I should try to... So these are in the background. Oh, oh stick it on the outside? Yeah. Well, I was wondering if I would wreck these. Holy jeez, do these stick? Oh. Well, I'm doing a live video. Well, yeah, I guess he's not watching live video. No, don't, don't roll down the window yet. Because I can't get these things off. You gotta pinch them. No, I'm trying to pin. Ah, oh, there we go. See, what I thought I could do is so they don't fly oh. off in the wind. Turn the thing So I'll just turn this around and then put it back on after. But I'll put this like this. Here we go. And I'll put this like this. Aren't these neat signs, folks? Look at this. Driver on brake, caution, do not disturb. And this, I would put both of those in my windows. If I pulled into a scale and I was at scale, I think I'd put both those in my window so that if the DOT officer wanted to come knock on my um, uh, vehicle, he can see that I'm in the sleeper berth, which means he should not disturb me because if he does, he's breaking his own laws and rules. And uh, caution, do not disturb. It's very clear. Uh, you know what I would like them to make one is a lot lizard one. I wouldn't mind a lot lizard one too. So I put that up there and put them on both windows. I get a couple and I put them on both sides of my truck saying no lot lizards and driver on brake caution do not disturb. So then if a lot lizard knocks on my door <laughs> uh, and we've we've had a conversation on that. So um, I won't uh, talk about that right now, but we definitely have... Uh, talked about that before um boy it uh do you remember um in the days it's so funny that uh when we um used to have signs i don't know if people remember uh when you were a trucker and uh yeah, there was you used to when you only when you only had the uh uh cb radio to talk back and forth and stuff like that um, and you'd use hand signals. You used to get these great big flip things, and they would flip over, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, put it in the window back in the days before all this groping and Bill Cosby and Weinstein and that it'd be things like show me your tatas and stuff like that. Of course, that's not what it said. Say something else. You'd flip it over as you went by a truck driver saying honk and yeah. Uh, Shauna Gray says you want one that brings lot lizards. That's right. That's right. Uh, open for business. <laughs> Wanted lot lizards. Open for business. That's right. Um, and Scott Field says you're bad sauna. That is funny. No, and Amy McKenzie. No, uh, it says like a uh, lot lizard help wanted sign. That was uh, Amy said that I think. Oh no, Shauna said that too. You want one that brings lot lizards. That's right. Uh, Peter's back. And Shauna Gray says I have a clever dog as a camera. My home works on my Wi Fi and app. So I see it on my phone. Yes. And Brett says big brothers in the house. No kidding, eh, Brett? And uh, Scott Fields, LOL, Amy. Amy says, Alexa, stop being a spy. Maybe she listens. That's right. Yeah. Alexa, don't spy on me. Alexa, leave me alone. But isn't that amazing, folks, that uh, um, people didn't think of that. People didn't think that uh, Alexa is listening all the time. What? What are you doing? Just uh, wait a second. I was just saying to William what he's doing. He was uh, trying to make me laugh and do funny faces. And uh, I didn't want to start laughing right away. Let me just look, see how I'm looking. Yeah, no, this is good. My red shirt Friday, that was kind of covered up. I got to put it there for my man boobs and stuff like that. Save the tatas. Dale Baker's watching. Brian Mack. Hey, Brian Mack. Hey, is the little guy watching right now? I'd say hi to him. Um, so... Yeah, the, these are important subjects I thought I'd cover. These are neat signs. I'll put up the, uh, and I'll talk about them some more. And I'll put up uh, maybe where you can order some and get them sent to you. And uh, put them on your vehicle. Hopefully they'll show up all over the place if we start asking for them and that. And as I say, uh, if they can make a lot lizard one too, that'd be really cool too to stick on the windows is that all the ones they have so far or do they i have think more? so i gotta i go gotta go on the website and check and see and i'm gonna go on the website myself tonight and check if you folks want to go on the website and check too as i say we already showed on the earlier on the video that it's caution signs dot co as in company dot uk caution signs dot co dot uk and usually i believe if Did you that go to the okay? bottom of the website here try you, it again because i don't think it showed up because it's yellow now i've got it in the light usually uh at the bottom of a website you could see something so you could email them so maybe you could email them a request to request a lot lizard one oh and and chucky was saying where's the xp3 I got XP3 right there by uh, William's seat. I don't think you'll be able to reach it because it's on this side. Oh, it slid over, over here. here. Yeah, but we can talk about XP3 because everybody knows what XP3 is. It's a miracle. And uh, we're definitely going to have XP3 at our booth at the Global Petroleum Show in uh, Calgary in just maybe three short weeks. Um, That'll be June 12th to June 14th, Calgary, Alberta, the Global Petroleum Show. And uh, like last year, will we have this big XP3 price pack with gasoline and diesel XP3 bottles, some of the big ones? I think we will have. I think we will have for some lucky viewers. We definitely will. We might even have a contest where we give some of these to some lucky viewers on the internet and see... Uh, See if uh, somebody wants these because we've got some extra ones. You know what I think we should do? We should do like a trivia night thing. And uh, if people answer it correctly, uh, whichever one comes up first correctly, then uh, they win one of those. Yeah, we could do trivia is like, what is the name of the person behind the camera right now? And we'll see what they come up with names, whether they call you Will, William dummy face what kind of names they come up um what is the name of the publisher editor of canadian trucking magazine or we could say um what is one of the most common things in our word search in our what search word search in the magazine 
Oh, that's true. Yeah, because we have a common theme all the time. What is the name of our team members going to Montreal? Uh, or how many um, how many likes on our page we want very soon? Exactly. Yeah, we can do all kinds of trivia like that. Um, Amy says, anyone ever get bad fuel at the coffee cup stations in South Dakota? Anyone ever get bad fuel at the coffee cup station in South Dakota? Is that a trivia question or is that uh, a question about that? Um, that uh, That is an interesting question. Scott feels willy. Dave, <laughs> Dave Funny McKenzie. <laughs> um, Amy, I'm not sure. I've never fueled there. I've always fueled at the Flying J's and that. I've always had Flying J cards no matter who I'm... Uh, uh, with and stuff like that so he could also and, get a nice shower yeah so that's where we take our showers and that so pilot flying j so i've never fueled at uh, at a coffee cup i'm not sure if they take my fuel card or not i've stopped there i've gone in there looked at the interesting stuff but never got fuel there i guess that's a question and anybody out there if you've got fuel um and kevin hildebrandt here you go amy uh, says, I heard this winter they had bad fuel. So they probably had water and stuff in their fuel and didn't treat their fuel. A lot of companies treated their fuel this year uh, in Canada and United States. And it's interesting because I heard a rumor, but I cannot say on live video, that they may have been treating it with XP3. With uh, the, some of them. Shauna Gray says... You should do a contest, and everyone that guesses a right answer, there's a random app that you put in the names, and it will choose one for you. Oh, good stuff. Yes, we should do that. And then we could send them some XP3. And uh, that's what Chucky's saying. XP3 will fix you. And turn my new filter black. Plugged it right up. Oh, my God. You know what, what else will do that? Hey, Howard. Howard McAfee is watching. You know what else will do that? And honest to goodness, um, house. If you use house in your fuel as a uh, to keep it from winter gelling, it will do that to your fuel filters and everything else. I used to be a big house user before I knew about XP3 and that. And then when I saw the demonstrations that were done with XP3 and I saw what was happening with the house, I used to remember that during the winter, I would add house for anti-gel and my fuel mileage would drop. And I would expect that because it's winter time, it's minus 40, minus 30. Of course, my fuel mile is going to drop. And that was it. Then came XP3 and it'd get minus 30 or 40 and I'd add XP3 and my fuel mileage would go up. And my power would go up and my filters were cleaner and everything else. In fact, it was so good I could skip one complete service. Plus, I was using less def. And wasn't your truck running so well? It was a little bit more touchy on the gas pedal. Oh, yeah. We got more fuel, uh, more uh, on your fuel pedal. We got more power, more power. So more performance. So then I, I, when I saw how they did the burn test and they put house on the top of a pop can and they put uh, a few of the other brands and they put XP3 and then they burnt it and house left a guck, a yucky petroleum guck all, on, all over the top of that uh, pop can, XP3 left nothing clean. You could lick it practically. So um, those are some demonstrations we'll be doing in Calgary at the Global Petroleum Show to show people that are using diesel generators, diesel engines, diesel equipment that you need to use XP3 because if you're using any other type of stabilizers in that or anything to add labricity because the sulfur uh, is out of the fuels now and you don't want to wreck those engines, this is why you use XP3. This is why you use it. So absolutely. Al Cripps. Hi, Dave and John Wayne. I've been busy uh, as uh, all get out. Yes. And did you notice I used SA1, stand as one, on my, uh, on my uh, part there, Al? I will do that for the rest of my life. And uh, Al Cripps says, house contains water. Yes, it does. Yeah, it contains all kinds of junk. And Amy says, 
This was in the last two, three weeks. No hows or additives. I do want some XP3 though. I'm going to hit Fort Gary Industries in the peg when I go. Hey, are you in the peg right now, Amy? Like, are you in Winnipeg this weekend? Let me know. I'll meet up with you and I'll look after you and uh, get you to try it for sure. And uh, let me know where you are. Private message me and uh, I got to uh, see you, my sister. Uh, Ken Hoffman. Hello, Chucky, he says. Scott Fields. Good night. All night sleep. Good night, Scott Fields. And meow. And my brother, Al. Thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Red shirt Friday. I got my red shirt on. I was talking about some signs tonight. Signs, signs everywhere. Sign. Um, the, Let's just uh, show the website one more time while you're doing some more talking. William's going to show the uh, website one more time while I'm doing some talking, he said. That's a, that's a place you can get some of these neat signs. And the reason why I like these signs, as I say, put them on the window if you're stopped at a way scale. And the guy knows not to come banging on your door because it clearly shows sleeper birth and they're not allowed to disrupt your sleeper birth. Hey, Shauna's in the pig. Yes, we got to get together, Shauna. Amy, no, heading to Ohio through northern U.S. Okay, well, I'm going to be heading south. I'll let everybody know where we are. Hey, Shauna, I might be in the pig tomorrow. I'll let you know. And if you are, we should get together for some wings or something. Amy, if they just filled the tank right before you fueled it, it could have stirred up the bottom of the bulk tank. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if the heck was going on. Never had bad fuel before that. Isn't it a pain when you got bad fuel? If you can get some XP3 in there, uh, that will kill all the contaminations. It will clean things and everything else. You'll have to double treat it. But I've had some people that has had some bad contamination. You can't over treat with XP3. That's a good thing is you can't over treat. So if you double, double, double treat it and stuff like that to fight those contaminants, it will do it. I wish I was someplace close to you, but let me know when you get closer to Canada because Chucky's in Alberta. I can get him to meet you or something. We'll get you looked after for sure. Now, but just in case there was any confusion, uh, what he meant by you can't uh, over treat is uh, it's impossible to over treat because if anyone was confused and thought meant uh, thought he meant like uh, it's if you over treat something bad could happen, but that's not true. Uh, XP3 is so fantastic that you could put lots in and your fuel will just your fuel miles miles will go right up. Yep, that's right. And I've proven that. I've shown the gauges of the truck and shown that uh, averaging uh, 70, 73 miles an hour, I was getting 7.4, 7.5 miles to the gallon with XP3. In the same truck that before me governed on cruise control was only getting at the most 6261, but usually around 59. So I jumped it up proof in the pudding, 7.4, 7.5, showing you the gauges live to show you that no, this is how fast I'm going, this is where I'm going, and this is what XP3 is. It is a freaking miracle. It really is. It is incredible. Uh, water and additives cause uh, algae in the tanks. Yes, it does. You're right, Al. And the good thing about it is the XP3 kills that algae. XP3 was originally uh, invented for ocean liners because they would get so much contaminants in their fuel tanks that they would have troubles with their diesel engines. And you don't want that in the middle of the ocean. So the developer from San Diego, California, turned around and he invented XP3. And then he made it better and better and better. And it's been absolutely awesome. So I think, hey, Drew Thornton. Hey, brother, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us tonight. Hopefully you got a night off and uh, you're having a great night and you're well. We got to get together soon too, Drew. It's been a long time. Um, other than that, I think we covered everything we want to talk about tonight. Yeah, pretty eh? much. We covered yeah. events, the warning about Alexa, and some tips. The warning about the CRA, oh, yeah. Red Shirt Friday, everything else. And uh, folks, I'll let you know where I'm going and what I'm doing. And hopefully we can get together and have some coffee. 
sometime and even talk more in person because as I always say, I would rather hear from you than about you. You bet you folks. So everyone be safe out there. Have a great night. Thanks for dropping in and saying hi tonight. And uh, the uh, uh, Drew says, hey, little bro. Hey, big brother. See you soon. And everybody else, as William and I always say, keep, keep on, on trucking. trucking.